Hey folks, this is Matt once again. I'm doing sort of a vlog. I guess that's the best way to call it. Um, first off, I wanted to let people know that uh, uh, any future BS casts or maybe fan comedies, but mainly BS casts that I do with my friends, Efri and Mike, I decided to put them on another channel, a channel I had made, and I put a commentary that me and my friend Efri had done for Leviathan. And that channel wasn't used a lot, I just had forgotten about it, sort of. So I figured, why not just put the BS cast in there, so in case, if people really like them, you can subscribe to the, the link will be right below the video in the info box. It's basically Ramble Raft commentary. And I just uh, uploaded a BS cast, a 19 part one, where me and my best friends, Efri and Mike, had talked about our worst and best films of 2010 what we thought was the worst, what we thought was the best, and it's definitely one of our best uh, BS casts And the fact that I used the call graph to record the audio, and it's very, very, very solid audio. You can hear everybody just crystal clear. It's very funny. Um, and also, we do actually get really in-depth in certain stuff, including, I think I sent a couple people part 8 or 9, because somewhere around there, it really gets into a sort of deep subject with the state of horror films today. So, uh, as I mentioned, a certain film called a Serbian film, and we sort of have almost an in-depth discussion on uh, a little bit before going back to our favorite and least favorite films of 2010. But uh, definitely at least check that part out, and uh, all 19 parts are uploaded, so you can take your time. Again, it's on that channel right down below. You can check it out. And any you can please subscribe if you want to. And all future BS casts will be put on there. And I'll just, you know, when a new one comes up, I'll probably pop up a video with the link to the channel again. And, uh, you know, you can definitely check it out. Uh, but I wanted to get that right off the bat. And I did see a couple films that I wanted to give sort of short uh, reviews on. Maybe short, but hell, I can upload this in one video now, so it don't matter. First is the Angelina Jolie film Salt. This is the deluxe unrated edition, but I didn't really notice anything that... I didn't see the original PG-13 version, I really didn't see anything that extended. I don't know what was extended. I didn't really care at that point either. Salt, it's a uh, Angelina Jolie... And Grant is Bill Noyce, he directed Blind Fury with Roger Howe, which I really love. But he also directed, uh, in fact, I did a review on Blind Fury, which I have not uploaded yet. I don't know when I'm going to upload it, because I just have a bunch of videos I want to upload. I have like, but if I upload them all at the same time, I don't think everybody's going to watch them all, and some of them are just going to be forgotten, and it's like, well, what's the point of that? So, plus I made videos like older videos to put up when I have my oral surgery so that I'm not I'm gonna not talk that much so I've made a bunch of videos to sort of I, I like keeping things sort of things being posted recently on my channel is just how I am um, so you might see like a different like wait a minute you haven't seen salt yet when I review blind fury but but yeah, I have like Blind Fury and Faceless. Someone wanted me to check that I did and did a review. Uh, Free Jack, uh, Rhinestone, uh, the Canine films, the Ghoulies films. I have a bunch of those. Um, so you may see them recently. Also, I know uh, for the end of the year, I want to do sort of a, a video of my top 15 worst films of 2010 and a video of my top 15 best films of 2010. So I want to upload that since it's the end of the year. But anyway, um, Salt. The film is Angelina Jolie is this woman who you think she's an eight, you know, she's just an agent. But then this guy comes in saying, you know, there's, there's this uh, like a double agent. Something about they train kids way back in the day and how they'll be sort of undercover for decades even, for years, years or decades, then a time comes where they're gonna, you know, do their job and 
you know, turn on the government, the U.S. government at this point. So, like, there's certain moles, and that you realize that Angela Jolie is a mole, but then, like, basically at the beginning, she's in prison, and the only way she got out of it and her life was saved was because this guy who... Her job was to be with him, but she's sort of touched by this guy really fighting for her to get out of prison, so... Oh yeah, there's heavy, heavy spoilers in all these reviews, so be warned. Just Salt, Wall Street, and Devil, I saw all of them, and there's heavy reviews, so... Heavy spoilers, I should say, so be warned. But Salt... She's really touched by it, and it's years later, and then she's... This Russian guy comes in saying that there's a, a mole, and that the name is Salt, and they hold her... And she says she wants to get to her sort of husband now. And uh, she can't reach him. And so she escapes saying that, oh, they set me up. But I guess she's trying to get to her husband. And you get some, a lot of chase, you get some chase scenes. Uh, long story short, then gets to a point where uh, she's going back to Russia. I guess they were trained as kids and to go undercover and stuff. And, how to put it? I guess to test her loyalty, they have her husband there and they shoot him in front of her and she doesn't do anything. And then she kills everybody there. And then she goes back, as if they're still on a mission, to the White House and... This guy, Lee Schreiber, you find out that he's actually part, you know, a comrade, so to speak. And the whole point is to, you know, get the detonation codes and, you know, release them and fuck up America. And, uh... The, the thing with this movie is, I'm not going to go that in depth because I don't want to, because I didn't really like the movie. Because... The thing about it is, granted, it was, I would think it's fast-paced in the fact that, you know, I was working on something and watching it, and, like, you know, I'm sort of watching it as I'm working on something, and then, oh, it's 30 minutes in, oh, it's an hour in, oh, you know, so it, it's not like a, then drag on, but at the same time, it wasn't really, it's kind of a forgettable film to me, uh, main, mainly because the action scenes, for the most part, You've either seen them before, or it's like, grand. there's one little decent scene where, you know, she has some, the, she's in the back of a car, and this guy fighting with them has a taser, she uses a taser for him to press down on the accelerator, not really believable, but you know, okay, it's a little bit different way to tackle it. Decent fight scene she has with Leah Schreiber where, you know, she gets bloody and stuff, granted. But the thing with the film is, it's highly forgettable. Why should I give a fuck about Angelina Jolie's character? That's why I kept asking myself, because, is she good, is she bad? Is she good, is she bad? Is she good, is she bad? Then it came to a point where I'm like, I don't give a fuck if she's good or bad. I don't really like her character. I really don't. Because, you know, uh, I was talking with my good friend Efri, who uh, doesn't like this film. I was talking to him on Skype, and he was telling me he had seen the film. Um, and actually on the BS cast on there, he talks about how he had seen the film as well. And his thoughts, and I, I agree with him on this film, Salt. I know Mike likes it, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But I sort of understood what Effie was talking about on the fact that, uh, like on the BS cast, when you check over there, if you do, uh, why is it that her husband, where, you know, this is basically, you know, she fell for him that moment when she got out of prison. You know, why does she watch while they shoot in front of him? Why, I mean, for the whole film, she's like this extremely efficient super spy. You know, she's doing MacGyver shit with fire extinguishers. She's able to taser someone. She's able to do knock people out, boom, boom. Like, she's such a super spy, and yet she fucking stands there with a thumb up her ass and, and a, on, you know, this look on her face. I'm like, why doesn't he take this guy's gun, 
fuck him up, hit him, shoot him, um, and then call it a day, and then save her hubby. I don't understand that. Because then it's like, you know, right after she gets in, you know, with the head guy and then kills him. And then that's it. Like, I don't get why she didn't just do that, boom. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of stupid, I thought. I thought that was kind of dumb. And for you, the ending is like... The way it ends, I'm going to spoil that, is... She saves and, you know, fucks up Liv Schreiber. He's going, you know, she's arrested. She has handcuffs. Somehow she's able to jump behind Liv Schreiber off the, like, a balcony, but holding on to him. So, it, like, chokes him, basically breaks his neck. Um, this guy from uh, Red Belt 2012, his first name is, like, starts from the E, L-E-I-Jor, Elijor, I can't remember pronounce his uh, name. Um, but he was really good as the lead in Red Belt. He was the guy in 2012, sort of the, not really, not well, kind of politician, but he's like the guy who's like, you know, the good guy against Oliver Platt's bad guy, so to speak. Uh, he sort of, you know, things don't really make a whole lot of sense. And ultimately believes her, lets her escape without them knowing. Like she jumps out of the helicopter into the water. She's running, huh, huh, huh. And then the movie ends there. And I'm like, did they just try to set up for a sequel or something? They just... I don't know, this movie just was not appealing to me. Didn't really like Angelina Jolie's character. Didn't like, you know, the ending was like, almost abrupt. The... It doesn't really leave you with a sense of satisfaction as if a story was told. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, she does little things like, you know, there's a security camera, she takes her panties off and she puts it on the camera to hide it, you know, hide her image. But that's not enough to save the movie. Like, the movie Salt is one I saw and I would never want to see it again. So, uh, yeah, it's, to me, a forgettable film. Didn't really give a shit about her character. Um, this review is probably going to go really quick. Wall Street 2, Money Never Sleeps. Uh, I don't know why I watched this. Uh, mainly just, you know, Oliver Stone film. With, uh, you know, Shia LaBeouf, who I like. And Michael Douglas. Hopefully he'll get better. Or even more better. Um, with his health. And, you know, you have Charlie Sheen in a small role. From his character in the first film. Where him and... Uh, or Gordon Gecko, was that the Michael Douglas' name, has a little conversation at a party. Um, I, if I had to choose, I would say this, I would like this a little bit better than the first film. Um, it's a little bit more like, uh, I don't know. I understand a little bit more what was going on than the first film. But at the same time, I mean, basically you have Shia LaBeouf who... Uh, he has this, like, this mentor type of guy, and he has this uh, girlfriend who happens to be the daughter of Michael Douglas's character, who just got out of prison. And Shia LaBeouf's like, the market is crashing very hectically, and there's rumors spread by Josh Brolin, who's the, basically the bad guy in the picture. And the rumor that was spread um, ultimately led to... Shia LaBeouf's sort of mentor killing himself and uh, Shia LaBeouf sort of wants payback so he spreads sort of a rumor thing um, one thing leads to another I just didn't really care because it's too long it's two hours and twelve minutes it's not my kind of movie I realize and the fact that the stock market and all that stuff really confuses me like it gets to a point where like I have no idea what they're talking about and to be honest I don't really care what they're talking about and, you know, I just, really enough, it's PG-13. I don't know why, for some reason, I always thought the original Wall Street was rated R, which I'm not sure, maybe I'm wrong. Just, I really think, well, why would that be rated R? But I don't know, I just, I don't know, it's just weird seeing an Oliver Stone film as PG-13. I'm sure he's done it before. It is, I'm, 
I'm really sure he's done it before, but it's just always strange to see an Oliver Stone film that's pretty much PG-13. At least that's what it says on here is PG-13, but maybe this thing's wrong, too. <laughs> you know, maybe it's not PG-13. But anyway, basically I don't want to double check now, but... Wall Street 2, Money Never Sleeps. I mean, I guess if you like the first Wall Street, give it a shot. I found it to be a little bit better because the story kind of smoothed a little bit better. But at the same time, um, if you didn't like Wall Street 2, it's really not one that uh, you're going to give two shits about. Yeah, it's rated PG-13. So it's always strange to see an hour old film PG-13, you know. Uh, really enough, this was the surprise of the week, so to speak. Uh, Devil, which you probably can't see there. But Devil was, uh, I didn't expect much. Granted, it is PG-13, but this is actually uh, more efficient. Uh, I kind of uh, didn't have any hope because it was produced by M. Night Shyamalan, or as I like to call him, M. Night Shyamalan and Dean Don, who, he really hasn't made a good film since... I would give it the signs. I mean, really, I like Unbreakable more, but I would give it the signs. I might not mind signs too much. Nowadays, since I hate Mel Gibson's guts, I do. Why do you hate him? Everything that's happened and his consistent of... he It's not the first time he's done stuff like this. He's consistently doing it. Like, I don't give a fuck what that girl's doing to him. You don't talk on a phone calling black people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like if I get pissed, I'm talking on Skype, and I talk to say Efri and Mike, and I call people, you know, who happen to be black, meh, 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 which I'm not going to repeat, like no Gibson does. They would be appalled, and I would not blame them. You know what I mean? Same way if anyone talked to me on Skype and they call certain people that. Or even group of people, I'd be like, what the fuck? That's not right. Well, you call people retarded. Well, there's a difference. Mentally challenged people are mentally challenged people. There's nothing wrong with them. I have no problem with mentally challenged people. Retarded is just the stupid people who make decisions like 20th century fuckface. Well, that doesn't give you right. Well, you know, what can I say? I'm no better than Mel Gibson. But, uh, I just, you know, I can't really stomach Mel Gibson doing that type of stuff, so Science is kind of, and his other stuff, um, it's kind of hard to watch. But, uh, yeah, if not Shyamalan has been on a street that I just wasn't impressed with. Last Airbender, I was not impressed with, uh, you know, really not impressed with The Happening. Or the Lady in the Water. Uh, so he only produces films. It's directed also by a guy who did the Poughkeepsie tapes, which is I remember seeing the trailer for that like three, four years ago, and then I don't think that film's ever even come out. Um, he also directed, I think, Quarantine, the remake to Red, which I thought was all right in parts, but had a ending that was disappointing, and the fact that it was on the fucking poster and the trailer, and you know, it's pretty much the ending to every one of those type of films. If you've seen the movie, you know. But Devil, uh, it is a part of his M. Night Shyamalan Chronicles, wherever the hell that's going to be in the future. I think one story is going to be like the story he would have done for Unbreakable 2, but they're going to use elements of that in the story. I'm like, why don't you just do Unbreakable 2? Maybe you'll make a comeback. Highly doubt it, though. But Devil was surprising. I mean, it's a story of you have five strangers who get on an elevator, which gets stopped. And strange things goes on, and you realize that one of them may be the devil, so to speak. And what I liked about Devil was that, uh, well, I'll start with the bat. I mean, basically, Devil, the bad thing is, is that the acting isn't always up to par. Um, the five strangers in the elevator are not the best actors, to be honest. Like, you have one businessman guy who looks a lot like M. Night Shyamalan. It's not him, but it looks like him. He's like a con artist. Like, each one of these people has had a past. You have an old lady who steals stuff. You have a, a younger woman who, like, is sort of a gold digger. You have Bokeem Woodbine, who's like a temp security guard there, but he also had a violent past. 
you have this guy who uh, was a, a soldier in Afghanistan. And they're not always the best actors. At times, they really get on your nerves, especially the old lady and the younger lady. Really got on my nerves at times. I mean, they're not the best actors. Also, you have those people. You have sort of two people, security people, who are like watching the monitors of the elevator. One I like called uh, actor called Matt Craven. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a big fan of Jacob's Ladder, which actually I have a poster right there of Jacob's Ladder. And you know, weirdly enough, Matt Craven is in that film, Jacob's Ladder. And Jacob's Ladder, he's the guy who he talks to Jacob Senior about the drug, the ladder, and making it for people in Vietnam and in the Middle East. And he's like, I can block the ladder and have that sort of almost exorcism type sequence, which they should have kept in the film. But I, I like Matt Craven. Um, the other guy, I think it's Jacob Vargas, it's like Hispanic guy. He got a tad annoying as well in the fact that he's very religious. You know, he, you know, he talked about the devil. Granted, this time he's right, but still it's like he has his cross where he gets on his knees and he prays in Spanish. And I'm like, really? Do you have to make the minority guy sort of, he's the very religious person and da da da. I'm like, why do you have to, oh, he's Hispanic and they're all religiously crazy. Not really, no. So that got tad annoying. So I know people are like, well, wait a minute, why was this a surprise then? Uh, first off, the length, it was, without credits, about 75 minutes long. About that, with credits is about, it's really, uh, with credits and with other stuff, it's uh, around 83 minutes long. For most of the film, it's probably around 75 or so minutes long. I know that means there's not eight minutes of credit, so I might have screwed up the timeline. But it's it really is like, with you know, stopping at the end credits, it's like 70, 75 minutes long. It's not that long of a movie. Those are at a good pace. Not a long movie, so it doesn't take long to watch. Uh, it was competently directed. Like, the director, I gotta give him credit for some good shots, whether it be the opening, where everything, the city's filmed upside down. I guess, like, almost like it was the devil's point of view or something. Or I guess, like, you know how the devil, you have the inverted cross, so, like, everything is upside down. And the shots, like, going through the vent and going through the building. Um, it does some decent moments of building suspense. Like, people are trapped in the elevator. The lights are flickering. It goes out. And you just hear stuff going on. And when it appears, you either find a dead body. You find something else has happened. Um, so you get some decent moments of suspense. Uh, you get uh, competently shot at times. Uh, a uh, pretty good score to help the film. Uh, and also, I think one big thing is the guy who played the cop, which I forget, is it Chris Messina? Or some, someone like that? The guy who plays the cop, who, you know, granted he has that typical, his wife and kid were killed by a hit-and-run guy who left the scene and just had a note that says, I'm so sorry. But the the actor really handled it well, and he has some good moments. Like he's talking to the people in the eleva elevator, and uh, not specifically telling about what happened. Tells about how you know he's been there. You know he was an alcoholic, and you know trying to help people in there. The the guy who played the cop really sold it for me. I mean he was a pretty good actor. I really liked him. He was good to root for. Um, and basically the film is like them trying to investigate, you know, would anyone in the elevator have a plan for this? Um, who's this guy? Who's this person? Who's this person? I just supposed to be the mystery of figuring out who the devil is, which I'm going to spoil right now because that's how I do. I like spoiling stuff. But uh, I really do like the film. I mean, the ending, which I'm going to spoil right now, basically find out that throughout the flick, uh, when the lights went off, people... Um, like the sort of the common guy, he got a throat and you know a piece of glass in his throat. Then the old woman was hung. Um, then uh, Booky Woodbine, um, he got his head like turned around almost like a 360. 
or a, I should say a 180 actually, but like that, you see like it's, yeah, like a 180, like he's laying down, but his head's like facing this way. Uh, um, also, I like the fact they didn't pull out a CGI monster out of their ass, which I, I'm granted for. And basically at the end you find out that the woman, the old woman who we thought was Hun, she is actually the the devil. And she's going to take this one last guy and he says, like, this one girl has died. And he's like, yeah, you know, I did a bad thing. He admits what he did. And so he's actually the guy who hit that cop's uh, woman and kid. And he's like, I'm so sorry, you know. And basically what was happening is... Um, he was reaching for something, he looked up, and then it hit, and then he was fucked up, and he ran, you know, he ran away. Not excusing him, not saying that, but, you know, he's admitting and saying, you know, tape me. I mean, really, don't take her, tape me, I deserve it, you know, and confesses, you know, his sin, basically. And one thing at least, ultimately, the devil can't take him, I guess, because he confessed and stuff like that. And ultimately, the the cop gets him in the car. And he says, "There's so many things I want to say to you, but you know, I guess after seeing everything, like the woman, who we, I guess seeing all the supernatural stuff, he ultimately does forgive this guy." I don't know, they, the ending, like usually it was done. I kind of, I thought they handled it well. They handled it a lot better than like Spider-Man Three with the "Oh, I forgive you." They handled it better in this film. I got a bit. Uh... So yeah, devil, you know, stuck in an elevator, one of them may be the devil, okay. Competently shot, um, I really like the lead guy who's the, I guess the, uh, the, the cop, I think it's Chris Messerism, but, uh, although not the most likable people, unfortunately, and the Jacob Vargas, sort of the Hispanic guy, was one of the security guys watching Mars. His com like they have him doing narration in parts of the movie that was not needed. He did not need it, and the guy did a bad job with it. I thought, and like they really did not need to do that with that character, you know. And I I, I think that would be an interesting idea where you just have two regular guys. Who have to be stick with that monitor as all this shit's going on, and we only see the point of view of what's going on in their their eyes. And they see a cop come in, and they hear on the radio what's going on, and they're talking to the elevator guy. Maybe he got oh he got shot, and they have the TV on, so the news and you know one walks out and one's there, and hey come back, and I think that'd be an interesting film. But anyway. This was a de devil. I thought was a decent flick, pretty decent flick, at least to me. But anyway, uh, that's my sort of vlog for right now. Um, I'm sure it took 30, 40 minutes or so. But anyway, thanks for watching, and we will see you later. And check out uh, our new BS cast at that once again that link Rambo Raft commentary. Um, subscribe if you would like. That's where all future BS casts will be. And I hope you enjoy that BS cast of our best and worst, uh, our favorite and least favorite horror, uh, well, any film, worst and least, uh, if I can say it right, favorite and least favorite films of 2010. So thanks for watching and take care. Later.